Hey friends, welcome to Hot News. Hope you're having a great Tuesday. I think that's what today is. Yes, okay, so we have a couple things to talk about with regards to Intel. There was a lot of announcements yesterday and everybody is also talking about AMD's big announcement yesterday and that'll be in today's episode of Hot News. But first, let's talk about today's sponsor spot, which is gonna be our merch because we have some cool designs that we didn't have last Friday. We have the Mobo Diamond. We also have the UFD Tech Gator on top of the Press F to pay respects, as well as the Hot Floppy. All of them great designs that you can pick up to show support for UFD Tech. Also just have really great merch. That's the that's the general idea. And then just uh, some housekeeping things in case you're still not familiar with what's happening. My family and I are moving back to the United States. We're in the process of selling everything in our office, which is also why the echo in here is quite intense because we've gotten rid of every bit of furniture besides this desk and this chair. So bear with us as things change all the time now. Okay, well let's talk about Intel's GPU news because that was a big thing that came out on Friday and we've been a little hectic so we haven't been able to cover everything with hot news. So a couple of these stories are gonna be things that have already been talked about elsewhere but I wanna cover them because they're big deals and that is that Intel's GPU has a couple of things coming out about it. First up is Raja Kadori, the chief architect behind Intel's Project Z graphics, tweeted out an image of presumably what's his Tesla Model X and its license plate, which says Think Z with an expiration date on the tag of June of 2020. Now this could be a vanity plate that's not actually real, or it could be the actual expiration date of the plate and has no indication on anything, or what the rumor mill around the internet is speculating is that this is going to be the announcement date or release date of the next Gen 12 graphics cards from Intel, and June 2020 is obviously around the time of Computex, so it would be a great announcement time frame for that. The only question I have is why is Raja Kadori only driving a P90D Model X and not a P100D? If you're gonna get the 90, why wouldn't you just get the 100? That's all I'm saying. Obviously, the tweet lends itself to a lot of mystery, especially since it's tagged directly to Intel graphics, so it does give an indication that Raja intended to do this on purpose, but we'll have to wait and see as we get closer to 2020 to find out what Intel's purpose is behind that. But then there's also some more information coming out of slides from Intel showing off that the Gen 12 graphics, if you want to remember Project Z, which is Intel's Gen 12, graphics covers everything from what's going to be integrated into mobile solutions all the way up to server discrete graphics. So the mobile solution apparently is going to be twice the performance of Gen 11, which is quite fantastic considering all of the benchmarks that we're getting out of Gen 11 is significantly better than what we've seen before out of Intel. So having high improvement on Gen 11 graphics, then doubling that to Gen 12 shows that Intel is probably making some huge strides when when it comes to the GPU department and that their discrete GPUs that should be announced at Computex will be a game changer as long as the price is appropriate. I'm excited, I hope you guys are too. But on top of that, Intel had a bunch of other announcements and releases yesterday. One of the announcements was Intel's The Element, which kind of harkens back to Razer's Project Christine, which is essentially a daughter board that features everything that you could possibly want on it, CPU, RAM, potentially integrated graphics, as well as storage onto it. And they showed it off where it has a PCI Express based interface so that you slot it into a motherboard and then you have a full functioning computer on that hot swappable you can change things out on the fly making sure that it's all there or potentially one of the cool things that you could maybe do with this if they allow it is have a main system that has a whole bunch of high-end components and then use this as a secondary streaming PC or something of the sort and then it just slots into your PCI Express slot and it will be that you could potentially slot multiple of these together on the same motherboard but the motherboard would have to be a different setup than your typical one because the CPU is actually on the daughter board. But Intel is planning on bundling motherboards with these things when they do go on sale, of, of which there's no actual date or price at this point. 
But speaking of price, Intel did give a price cut to their ninth gen Intel CPUs, the ones that don't have integrated graphics on them, dropping them by up to 20%. If you take a look at the chart that's on the screen, you can see that the 9900KF went down 5% to only $463, whereas the i3-9100F got a 20% price drop to be under $100. A lot of the major price drops coming in the mid-tier uh, setup. So if you're looking for an i3 or i5, Intel just made it a little bit more competitive with what is going to be AMD's offering the Ryzen 5 3500X, which should get announced sometime soon. But Intel's other announcement was something that we talked about last week, and that's their Tendi series, which is the new high-end desktop chips featuring Cascade Lake performance. There's not a whole lot different about these chips from the previous Skylake X, except for the fact that the price is significantly lower, less than $1,000 for an 18-core chip, around $600 for a 10-core chip. That makes it more competitive with AMD's Ryzen 3000. We'll have to see what this looks like when AMD drops their Threadripper 3 series, though, because that might change a few things. But to run these new Tendi series CPUs, you might want to upgrade your motherboard. And that's where MSI comes in with their new X299 refresh motherboards. The Creator X299 actually has an intriguing design on it, which is that you need three 8-pin power connectors to run this thing because those Tendi 980XEs are going to run hot with those 18 cores, 36 threads, overclocking them to five gigahertz on super liquid cooling you're going to need all of that power to to make that happen but you're going to need less power for tsmc shipping of the seven nanometer plus architecture the euv based lithography for tsmc actually has been under production so far i believe that is what apple is using in the a13 chips so it's not necessarily something that is uh all that new it's just that with apple shipping this stuff TSMC is also good to go on the 7 nanometer plus node. We can expect AMD and NVIDIA to get on the TSMC 7 nanometer plus train sometime in the near future. But Samsung is on its own train with its new 12 layer design of HBM2 memory, which could allow it to have up to 24 gigabytes per stack, which is three times the current capacity of eight gigabytes per stack. And so those crazy Vega cards can come in with super amounts of VRAM. I mean, AMD, you might want to give us a Radeon 8 with 48 gigabytes of HBM2. Maybe. Just say That's what the people want. I can hear them chanting for it. And then let's move on to AMD's announcements, which was a paper launch of their brand new graphics card, the RX 5500 series. It has a key few things about it that are quite interesting. First of all, it's gonna be using GDDR6 memory up to eight gigabytes on 128 bit bus. It potentially will be using the Navi 14 GPU, even though AMD didn't explicitly say that was what that was, but they did say that because of the seven nanometer production and offers 1.6 times performance per watt over the RX 480. And that was the main comparison that AMD did draw was between the RX 480 and the GTX 1650 of the RX 5500. However, this is just a paper launch. There is no card that's slated to be on the market. It's a single fan reference cooler design, but there's no release date or pricing given. So this is just an announcement, not necessarily something that you uh, will be saving up for because the price is going to determine how exciting this GPU is. I think if it comes in at anything more than $150, it would likely just be better to buy a used RX 480 or 580, or potentially, depending on the sale, a brand new RX 580. So AMD has themselves to blame for how well this new Navi GPU is going to sell based on uh, the fact that the Polaris series has been successful enough to make it so that this is a saturated market that they're entering into. But it's not just going to be coming out to discrete desktop GPUs. MSI announced that they're going to be having the RX 5500M laptop, the world's first featuring the Navi GPU. It's gonna be called the MSI Alpha 15. It actually has some pretty amazing specs behind it. You have a Ryzen 7 3750H processor, the RX 5500M GPU with four gigabytes of GDDR6, up to 16 gigs of RAM on the laptop, a 15.6 inch display with FreeSync up to 144 Hertz, and then uh, a typical 512 gig NVMe drive, six cell 51 watt hour battery. It looks to be a pretty decent laptop when all things are said and done. And then 
NASA came out yesterday talking about how they're excited that SpaceX is celebrating the whole Starship uh, celebration, that everything's good there, but they had to throw a little shade saying, I'm looking forward to the SpaceX announcement tomorrow. In the meantime, commercial crew is years behind schedule. NASA expects to see the same level of enthusiasm focused on the investments of the American taxpayer. It's time to deliver. Obviously, this is in reference to SpaceX's Crew Dragon, which is supposed to be the reusable rocket so that they can send people up to space and back down, and that it's not going to cost taxpayers a whole lot of money. Elon Musk retorted when asked about this, uh, what do you think of the SLS program that has also been plagued by delays and not necessarily ready at the time that they're expecting it to be, which SLS is the space launch system, which is supposed to get America back to the moon and to Mars. Potentially, you start off in low Earth orbit and then you launch from there. That's the general idea. But both Crew Dragon and SLS have been plagued by delays. But the individual who called SpaceX out for this, Jim Bridenstein, he is going to be visiting the SpaceX facility sometime soon. And hopefully we'll get his answers and his questions answered by Elon Musk during that time. But speaking of Elon Musk's other developments, the Tesla cars are going to be getting an update that will allow you to customize the horn and low movement speed sound so that you can have a unique experience of how you alert other people to your existence. Elon Musk has teased that we should get some goat bleeding, rushing wind, or the coconut horse clops from Monty Python and the Holy Grail. It has been mentioned that it is possible that users might be able to upload their own sounds. Obviously, that will have copyright restrictions as well as you don't necessarily want to be blaring a whole bunch of stuff with your horn that maybe shouldn't be there, uh, such as uh, profanities. Watch your profanity. And then other Tesla news, they bought the Canadian battery company, Highbar Systems, to help really move along Tesla's in-house battery development, which is supposed to be going smoothly at this point with the Gigafactory is expected to be up and running soon. The Gigafactory in China is also expected to be up and running soon and producing a whole bunch of cars. So Tesla vertically integrating everything that they need to deliver cars will potentially allow them to start shipping them out at a faster rate. But you know what can be shipped out to you at a faster rate? Currently, the Pixel 3a and 3a XL are both $50 off on Amazon. So if you've considered picking up one of the cheaper Google phones, I love my 3a XL. They are just $50 off right now. You can check that out at the link in the video description. The 3a going for $350, the 3a XL going for $400. And $30. Great deals all around. And then the last little bit of news is Eve, the company that was behind the Surface competitor previously known as Eve Tech. They have announced what their uh, crowd developed Spectrum Gaming Monitor will have, which is LG's one millisecond IPS panel. It's going to come in at 1440p, 144 hertz sock refresh rate, overclockable to 165. The free sync range will be from 48 to 165. Again, one millisecond response time, 400 nits brightness. And the big thing about this is its crowdsourced design aspect. It actually is a pretty decent looking monitor if you like a wine glass shape for the stand. It's kind of intriguing. Uh, hopefully it comes in at a very competitive price, which is what Eve is saying. That would mean that it would have to come in sub $500 considering that's exactly what LG's one millisecond 1440p 144 hertz monitor is currently selling for. So hopefully that's what happens. Anyways, that's gonna be the end of Hot News today. Thank you all so much for tuning in to this episode. Don't forget to check out our merch at the link in the video description if you wanna support us in this transitionary period back to the United States. Again, things will continue to change and look different as we get more forward into this progress. My wife is leaving in just about a week with our youngest son to take him back for medical treatment, and then I will stay here trying to wrap up the loose ends. But during that time, it's all going to be crazy. So thank you for sticking with us. Thank you for everything. Thank you for watching. I'm Brett. You've been great. Bye. She had questions in her eyes. Oh, I should have realized it was over.